fellow aerodynamicists, this is Professor Wong. We already built an airplane in CAD and meshed it. Today we are going to run a computational fluid dynamic simulation in Flow360 and see the results. To launch a computational fluid dynamic simulation, we select a mesh that is already in the uploaded status and click the new case button. The first thing we have to specify in the simulation is the mesh units. That means one in the mesh represents one meter or one inch or one something. In this case, one represents one meter, so we select meter as the mesh unit. This is also an opportunity for you to specify a reference area, a moment center, and a moment length. These quantities are used for computing the coefficients, like lift coefficients, drag coefficients, and the moment coefficients. In particular, the moment coefficients are computed around the moment center. In the next screen, we specify the three stream quantities. The default density and the temperature are the standard atmosphere conditions. Here we have to specify a free stream velocity and also angle of attack. In the next screen, we specify the boundary conditions. Notice that the no slip wall boundary conditions already contained in the mesh is defaulted as no slip wall. And the other boundary conditions are defaulted as free stream. So in this case, we don't have to change anything and just click next. On the right side of the web page, you can see a JSON file being populated. The JSON file contains the non-dimensional quantities that will be an input to the solver. These non-dimensional quantities include the Mach number, for example, that is computed from the dimensional free stream velocity. This screen asks if we want to perform a steady state simulation or unsteady simulation. Here, we perform a steady state simulation. In the next screen, we input the parameters for the Navier-Stokes solver. In this case, we don't really want to change anything in the solver setting and just click next. Here, we have a turbulence model solver. Again, we keep everything as default. The next screen specifies the volume output. That is what flow visualization file you will be able to download after the solver is complete. In this case, we choose the Paraview format, which can be opened by the Paraview visualization software. You can click the Help button to see what all these options mean. Similarly, we can choose the options for surface output. Finally, we give a name to the case and click Submit to start the fluid dynamic simulation. And once the case is submitted, you're going to see a new case popping up in the cases list. When our simulation is finished, we can click into the case and see several tabs on the top of the case. First, we can click on the Convergence tab to see how well the case has converged. In this example, we see that the continuity equation has converged to several orders of magnitude, all the way to 10 to the minus 10. We can also click the other equations, including the momentum x equations, momentum y equations, the energy conservation equation, and the turbulence equations to see how well these equations converged. In this case, all the equations are converged to very good tolerance. Now on the min max tab, we can see what is the maximum velocity in the entire flow field, what is the minimum pressure and minimum density, as well as their locations. The most important tab is the forces tab. In the forces tab, you can see all the forces and moments around the airplane you are simulating. Here you can see the lift coefficients and drag coefficients. Below it, you can see the force coefficients in the x, y, and z directions. Now, when the angle of attack is non-zero, the force coefficients in the x and z directions are actually not the same as the lift and drag coefficients. On the bottom plot, you see the moment coefficients. The moment coefficients are the moments around the moment reference center you defined when you are performing the simulation. They are also non-dimensionalized using the free stream density, free stream velocity, using the reference area you specified, and also the moment lengths 
you specified during launching the simulation. Finally, we navigate to the Visualization tab. In the Visualization tab, you can see the flow quantities computed on the surface of the airplane model. The FV tab shows you the streamlines very close to the surface of the geometry. If there is any flow separation, it is easy to spot from the FV visualization. The CP visualization shows you the pressure on the surface. And finally, the Y plus tab shows you the Y plus on the surface. This quantity tells you whether the first layer of your volume mesh is sufficiently thin. A quantity between zero and one is a good thickness. If the Y plus quantity is much less than one, it means your first layer thickness could have been thicker. If the Y plus quantity is much greater than one, then your first layer is too thick and the simulation may not be accurate. To look at different areas of the airplane geometry, you can rotate the view and look at other sides. You can also position the camera above or below the airplane to look at different areas. If there are details of the airplane that are hard to see, you can also zoom in for a better view. The Visualize 3D tab gives you another view of the simulation result. In this tab, you can visualize the Q criterion which visualizes where the vortices are around the airplane. In this case, we can clearly see a pair of tip vortices coming from the tip of the wing, as well as the viscous wake behind the airplane. If you want to look into even more details of the flow field, you can download the visualization files and open it in TechPlot or Paraview. This completes our tutorial on how to do a basic computational fluid dynamic simulation. I will see you in future videos.